firm marketing, attorney marketing, lawyer marketing. That's what we're going to be talking about today. The top nine tips I have for online marketing for law firms and attorneys. All right, I'm Kurt Hamill, and today we're going to do a little quick deep dive in just the general online marketing stuff for law firms, pretty much. So first off, my very first tip is hire a professional. I'm gonna just say that straight out. You might be like, yeah, the rest of this video to go, right? My number one tip is to hire someone. You're a lawyer, you can make more money per hour if you hire a professional uh, worker or an agency to do this kind of work for you. Um, obviously, you might just be on this video because you wanna know how to do this just for knowledge sake to make sure the people you hire are doing it correctly and professionally, right? And that's fine too. But my number one qu quick tip, and I'll go over more of that at the end, is really find a professional or an agency that can do all this work for you so you don't have to spend all the time to learn how to perfect all this stuff, how to rank higher, because uh, it's a very competitive field out there, right? But that's what these tips should help with as well. If you are dead set on learning it all and doing it yourself, I mean, maybe you're fresh out of law school or something like that. But if you have the funds, definitely hire someone to do. It'll actually be better for your business hiring a professional or an agency to get this stuff done. Um, but yeah, let's just dive right in, right? First off, the number one tip I got on this list, have a great website. What does that really mean, right? That means you have a sleek, modern website. It's gotta be super fast, right? Uh, you get ranked on Google and Bing for speed, especially on Google. If you're not loading fast, they don't like that. Do not have a heavy website bogged down by problems, not loading fast, right? And a lot of the times now they're grading you on your mobile speed too. That's not on the desktop speed where you have, might have fiber loading it like that no matter what. They're testing it on 4G uh, networks a lot of the time or maybe even 3G depending on your region. Uh, with that also, that means you need to have mobile ready. That's what a lot of times Google's grading your website on. How is the content performing on an Android device, on an iPhone device? Because that's what a lot of people, especially when we're talking about the local search options, People are looking you up on their phones a lot of the times. More and more people are on the phones, not on the desktops, right? So that's where we're grading it from. Um, beyond that, you need to have great content and you need to be optimized for search engine optimization. That means ranking higher. And that's going to be more points I talk about later on, so I'm going to get into that more in depth. But then on the general structure of the website, you need to be secured. On the top left of your bar up there here, I will switch over to this. Uh, you got up here. It says HTTPS, right? Uh, so now HTTPS is an SSL certificate. And that means it's secure. That all the data people are entering on your website is secure. Uh, that is becoming more and more of a ranking factor with Google. So really, and it just shows, you get this nice little green verified uh, icon too. People don't want to go to a website and be telling them, uh-oh, get out of here. This is not safe. Make sure you have an SSL cert on your website. It's very important. Even if you're not taking credit card payments through your website, I would still recommend it because it just looks so much more official that you have that trusted little sign up there on any uh, browser. Uh, and beyond that, uh, make sure the structure and everything is built perfectly for if someone's coming on desktop or on mobile. You can optimize for both. So make sure, especially if you're on WordPress or Squarespace or however you're setting up this website, uh, obviously, I would recommend a custom website or a WordPress website over like a little builder. But however you're doing it, make sure it's functioning perfectly on both. So that means testing it out, having other people test out your website. Uh, make sure just the layout is good. And we'll talk about that more later on for like funnels, because this is all we're doing, right? We're trying to get you more clients. Uh, and with that, if you have a confusing website that doesn't allow the user to figure out within like three seconds, I think is the time, and that's including loading times, they're gonna boot out and check another thing on Google. So you got basically three seconds for when that person comes on there a lot of the time for them to figure out what they need to do. If they need to contact you, if they need to see your services, if they need to read a little bit, make sure that's all on there real quick. Uh, think about that when you're thinking about, especially the mobile layout. The mobile user is so fast, you gotta be ready for it. Uh, beyond that, um, you can later on, we talk about other stuff like content and stuff like that and SEO. Uh, just being optimizing it and like compressing those images and stuff like that. Doing A-B testing, which means testing out different formats to see which work the best. Um, and then obviously doing analytics tracking, which is going to be another point in the long term. And then just using that all for a big conversion funnel and getting you more clients, right? So that was number one, just having a great website. Because that's most important. That's what all this is about. Uh, 
It's about having the great website, getting everyone to that website, getting you sales, leads, and clients. Number two, uh, Google My Business. So I'll give you a little hint right there. Number three is gonna be listings and citation websites. And Google My Business is one of those, but I'd say it's even more of those. It's so important nowadays to have a full, and that's what we're on here, right? Google My Business. Um, so I kind of guess skipped over that onto here. Um, you can attract new customers and stuff like that. So it's free first off, but it matters so much, especially if you're local, if you're a, a local firm, a local smaller law firm, because let's go over here. This is the Google My Business, right? So it shows you your reviews on here, and that's gonna be another thing we talk about later on. Uh, it shows the services you offer. So like it'll be your number one thing, like criminal justice attorney or whatever. You can see reviews, blah, blah, blah. And it brings up reviews from the rest. Um, but yeah, and you can put a little info on here. But basically, uh, it'll help. What, what, what does that help show up for? Um, in the local three pack, what we call it, which are these things up here, these three, that's where they pull this info from. It's from your Google My Business. Uh, so if you need to rank, and look at that, what comes up first? You got pay per click, pay per click, pay per click, uh, pay per click. Those are the advertisements. And they got another ad here. But then after that, the local three pack. And so that's really what the Google My Business is so important for. Because when people are on mobile or on desktop, that's what's going to come up first. And especially if people are looking up on Google Maps, that's what the info comes up. It's from your Google My Business. It is so crucial, so important for what you're doing in the day-to-day -day these days. It is its own category. You can enter in so much info. Make sure it's all correct. If you don't have control of your Google My Business, go do that right now. It's free. It's almost on par with the website these days, right? Um, but yeah, Google My Business. All right, and that's uh, my number two was Google My Business. Number three, listings and citations. So Google My Business is a listing and citation website. You know, basically has all your info, your contact info. People go to these websites to figure out like what kind of lawyer they want to hire, stuff like that. Um, but Google My Business is so important, I just put it in its own category. Number three, uh, the listings and citations. Those are like websites that offer backlinks and stuff like that. Uh, so things like Bing Places for Business. Now that's a big one that people forget about. It's just like Google My Business, but for Bing Places for Business. So it powers Bing Maps and Bing Search results, right? Now though, Bing is a relatively small search engine compared to Google, right? I think it's only got like three or four, like 3% market share or something like that. However, it does power other things like Alexa search, you know, Amazon Echo, Amazon search stuff. So if people are asking Amazon questions, that's powering it. It powers Yahoo. Uh, so Bing is hired out by a lot of companies that don't directly want to hire out Google. So though Bing places for business might not give you that much traffic. I mean, even 3% of all traffic, that's a lot when we do the numbers game, right? You don't want to miss out on that. It's an important one. Uh, beyond that, uh, I mentioned uh, LinkedIn. Uh, your Facebook page even is one. Then there's like lawyer specific citation pages, right? You've all heard of Avo. You've seen their ads in the past. Uh, I wouldn't even say they're the top ranked one anymore, but you can get on here, make sure you have good ratings and everything. Uh, and that's another point we'll talk about later on, getting those ratings. Uh, and once again, if you need any of this info, it's all gonna be on the doobly-doo and on my website and stuff. You can find it all. Feel free to comment anything below too if you have any questions, as always. I'm gonna keep going though. Um, but yeah, Justia is an important one. And so some of these will require you to send in like your, your information as an attorney in your state, all depending on where you are. Um, Super Lawyers is a big one. I think Super Lawyers or Justia are ranked number one right now for citation pages for lawyers. Avo's actually dropped off a bit. But uh, a lot of them are all under one conglomerate nowadays. They've all kind of gotten bought up and smushed together. But you need to be on everyone, controlling your profile, making sure they're out there. Because you get backlinks first off, uh, and some people just go to these websites to find a lawyer. That is a big source, and it's like free, most of them. You don't need to pay for the premium stuff with a lot of this, but you can if you want to. Uh, but first, make sure you're using the free version, understand how the platforms work. Um, beyond that, too, uh, Yelp is a huge local one, right? Uh, Yelp is comes up so often in Google search results that I would say it is the... After the lawyer niche things and Google My Business, it's probably Yelp is the most important uh, listing or citation page after that. And with all this, and I'll talk about it later, make sure we're worrying about these, these um, ratings, right? But yeah, uh, beyond that, uh, other stuff, like your Facebook page is super important. You do get those likes, those do show, I mean, not likes, 
ratings, uh, those will show up even on your Google results page. They pull those from your Facebook page. Those are important. People, uh, Facebook page ranks high. So if your Facebook page has like bad reviews and like is a poor page, people are going to see that. They're going to go to a different lawyer. It's, it's, it's like your office. You, know, you don't want your office to look like trash. You don't want your online profiles to look like trash. Um, what have I not mentioned? Oh, your state bar. So like in Michigan, for example, the state bar directory is powered by Zeke Beak. Uh, it powers a few other states, but figure out where your state bar lists everything for attorneys. Make sure you're on there. Make sure your profile is up to date. Make sure it's detailed. Oh, another thing with all these citations and listings, make sure they all have the correct information and the same information. They should all have the same phone numbers, the same emails, the same website URLs the same uh, hours of operation. Everything should be identical, right? You don't want one having the wrong phone number from five years ago and stuff like that. It also will confuse search engines like Google uh, and that could pull the wrong one and that could really hurt your business. So make sure all the other stuff. But then there's other stuff too, like local newspapers are a great source of citations. So like MLive in Michigan has a listing section where you can add your business and that's a super high qualifying ranking for Google because it, considers it first a newspaper, which is credible and local. So it's a double whammy. So things like that. So think about your area. Every area is going to be different. You have to do some research into that. What works best in your state and even your city. Um, like maybe if you're in a smaller town, make sure you're on that working well with that newspaper. A lot of times they will have spaces where you can put your info. Um, and yeah, that's part of this too. Make sure you're thinking locally too. Another thing, I haven't even brought up is local orgs like your local bar associations most cities or counties have bar associations and even beyond that like if you're in a larger city of like ethnic uh, bar associations like the irish bar association polish bar association you know muslim bar association stuff like that um your chambers of commerce is that are local um and obviously the state bar pages we just talked about and other orgs that you're a part of, like maybe Rotary Club, Knights of Columbus, stuff like that, will a lot of times have listing pages. Uh, and those are local backlinks that Google likes and those are great. So I just spent a lot of time on citations, right? But those are so important because they basically correlate data with Google that says, this is a legit dude. Look at these on all these other pages that are also legit. This is good stuff. He's got good reviews, good details here. And people are on these websites, so they'll click through to you too. Not everyone is searching X, Y, or Z. Not everyone wants to go to your website. They'll want to go to a listing thing with a lot of different lawyers so they can get the best ones. So it's a competitive place, right? All right. So think about things like that. Other things like I didn't mention, there's other stuff like NOLO, lawyers.com, lawyers.law.cornell.edu, Legal Match, American Bar, Martindale, stuff like that. Find Law. Uh, yellow pages, stuff like that. Just just keep it all in your head, right? Look look around. There's tons of these descriptions, and I've done other stuff on my even YouTube channel about these. Really important. I'll have this all listed down below, too, with some links of the ones that I think are the most important for you to be on. All right, number four and five. So these are actually two different things, content strategy and SEO, right? But they go together. So search engine optimization, which is SEO, is super important but you can't have seo without a content strategy and a content strategy like just creating content for no reason that's no good you need to do some seo some search engine optimization and research before you create content you don't want to just create content for nothing so that's why i'm doing four and five together here um that would be content strategy and seo so first off content strategy what is that that's the content you put on the website um you know your website needs stuff. Um, you need stuff like FAQs, you need contact information, what uh, services you provide, stuff like that as a lawyer. What are your specialties? Beyond that though, you wanna have good in-depth guides and stuff like that, but how do you know what to make? What are people looking for? Well, you need SEO and stuff like keyword research for that. So you need to be doing keyword research, which means what terms are people typing into Google? Uh, basically, like, are they typing in drunk driving lawyer or are they typing in DUI lawyer? And they're typing in both. So you have to look at how competitive those are. What are the numbers behind that? And I'll talk about some tools in a bit too that you can use to research all this. But you need to decide and like locally look at who are the top ranking people for these? What law firms locally are you competing against? Because that is so important. It's not just, um, you're not just facing the void, right? You are in, it is not, a, it, oh, I'm sorry, it is actually a zero-sum game. You are trying to beat out 
for the top spot on Google uh, and just for the best quality content out there as a lawyer. So when people come to your website, you're trying to beat out the other law firms near you that provide similar services. If you do drunk driving stuff, you need to make sure that you have better quality content than the other drunk driving lawyers out there. If you do family law and like or divorces, even more specific, something like that, you need to make sure that you have the best divorce content that is answering the questions that these people have more than the other lawyers near you. And you need to do a few different, there's tons of tools, and I'll talk about those in a sec, that test all this stuff, but you need to make sure that you're not just creating content. I see so many lawyers that have these blogs that are just like talking about legal stuff that no one cares about. People have, like, it might make you look a little more authority, like an authority in your space, and that's great. If you like writing that stuff, do it, but don't just write stuff to write stuff to fill space on your website. It's not gonna do anything. You need to be doing this keyword research so that when someone has a specific question, like how do I get my license back in Michigan after my third DUI or something like that? And like stuff like that, you need to like have done the research to know what exact questions people are asking so you can target those keywords and answer them, right? Because like even in Michigan, like a lot of lawyers, they see talk about OWIs and stuff like that because we don't have DUIs in Michigan, right? But it's like people still call them DUIs. The lay person will call, type in DUI into Google. They're not typing in the whatever it's actually called in Michigan. So you have to know to target that, right? And some people will, but that's much rarer. And so you want to get more traffic, right? So you want to target what people are actually doing. At the same time, make sure you're targeting something that's, if, if there's like four lawyers that have just done such amazing content on a question, don't go for that one. Go for some easier stuff. Trust me, they're out there. Figure out what you can win at. Because these days, number two even isn't good enough. You want to be number one in your area to answer that question. Uh, so think about that. So then we're talking about content strategies. And then beyond that, with search engine optimization on this content, once you've started actually creating the content, you got to think about stuff like the meta tags, the title tags, and the header tags, right? So this is old school SEO stuff. That means tagging everything in the in the coding on the HTML side properly, right? Um, making sure that um, the robots.txt is acting appropriately. Like I had a client where I went in, couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting any traffic, went in, uh, I mean, it hired someone poorly, right? That had done this bad job. Literally had the robots.txt telling Google, don't put my website up on Google. So stuff like that even, you gotta be making sure that's all good. Um, site maps still matter in this day and age, believe it. Uh, Google, it helps so much when you have a good laid out site maps. They're easy to implement, make sure you implement one. Schema still matters, so make sure you're following proper protocol once again, the HTML with schema tagging. Um, and then like we were talking about before, external links back, backlinking to your website matter a lot. Those are from all those other sources. But internal linking still matters a lot too. Correctly using internal links uh, along with keywords uh, internally to link between pages all through your website, that matters so much too. And image linking and stuff like that. Uh, and while we're talking about SEO, right? And images, uh, make sure you're optimizing these images correctly. And that means uh, giving them the correct alt attributes and the correct image titles. Don't just have image XY3212. Make sure those images are called like, let's say you're a divorce attorney um, best divorce attorney near me or something like that. Uh, cause those do correlate with higher SEO values. So higher rankings on Google. Um, now beyond that, sorry, I'm going to continue. Uh, make sure as we were talking about earlier with the website stuff, right? This is all going back with the website too. It's optimized running fast. Cause that is what Google is ranking a lot of it on. How fast does it load for that mobile user? it needs to load within like 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 that do not have a heavy old school website you need light even if that makes it look a little less fancy you'd rather have it lighter with good content than a little nifty tricks coming in slowing it down right there's a lot of ways to do those nifty tricks um lightweight too but you'd rather have it fast with good content than having anything slower bogged down the website um now, tools we can use for all this stuff, right? Here, let me switch over. All right, so there's stuff like Ahrefs, a uh, great tool. Uh, you can try it out, $7 a month too. Uh, it is actually, it costs a little more, but it is an amazing tool. I'd really recommend the Ahrefs. That's what I use professionally a lot of the time. Uh, Moz just updated their um, 
SEO stuff, Moz Pro. I don't personally use Moz, but I heard they've updated a lot of stuff. I know they did. They tried to get. I tried using their free stuff, but I already use Ahrefs. It does a lot of the same stuff. Um, and this is all for like search engine. Wow. I'm um, sorry. Google Analytics. Uh, I can't really show you some analytics stuff. I sh I thought I had something else pulled up. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, Google Analytics will track all the data on your website and stuff, right? So it can show you how many users are on, uh, like all sorts of data, right? Your audience, your acquisition. And we'll talk about that in a second too. Like you need to have tracking on your website. You need to have installed Google Analytics, not installed, but just putting the code in, right? So be tracking all the users that are coming from your website. Um, use that for keyword research to see what's converting, to do A-B testing, stuff like that. Then Google, the number one thing people just forget about, right? Google is your best friend to just like, Let's say, yeah, so divorce lawyers in Michigan. So you can start off, this is not what I use for hardcore research, right? But once I get kind of stuff like this, I'll put into Ahrefs or Google Analytics and then you can get a list of stuff similar, right? So like right there, like Detroit lo divorce lawyers for men, right? That's a, that's a more little specific one. And then like if you wanna get closer, you can for men's rights, stuff like that and um, but then you use those terms once you find some good ones, kind of just seeing what Google auto recommends. You put those into Ahrefs or Moz or Google Analytics, and that's how you're developing that keyword research for SEO and for content curation, right? Now, beyond that, there's also like answer the public, great little question things, right? Uh, it's uh, Even it's free stuff. It's kind of all I, I don't pay for answer the question. I it's Sometimes it's just good. Um, drunk. And so you can just get it, it'll just give you little questions right um, I'll let that load but then there's SEM rush which is also a great tool uh, you can actually get a free little you can create an account for free before paying for it try it out you get like 10 free uses really cool can show you competitors especially which I really like um, it'll show you if you're looking like you know it'll show, take your website compared to see who you're competing with what keywords you're competing with stuff like that uh, even locally which is really cool then there's other stuff um, yeah but th those are the main tools that I would recommend if you're just trying to figure out where to even start with really Google Google Analytics Google Search Council which I'll talk about more in a second too those are where you need to start those are uh, so important right uh, and then once you've gotten all this data right you're gonna go back you're gonna target that content, right? You're gonna create new, fresh content. You're not gonna create something that's already out there that your competitor has. You need to have a fresh spin on it. You need to beat the people out there when you're creating this content. Um, when I'm working with clients, you know, I'm hiring, I try to take it away from them. I'm hiring a copywriter that's professionally like doing this stuff that does SEO writing uh, that ranks, right? So go look out there, see what is ranking right now and then understand how you have to beat that, you know? Um, and then beyond that content video wise right video is doing so well right now you know YouTube I think is the second largest search engine after Google like higher than Bing or anything like that in the US I'm talking about not sure what's in the rest of the world but like video is so great and Google and Google owns YouTube right so they're putting search results of video in some of the top ranking things right creating video uh, Creating the same content you're creating on your website, if you create that in a video format as well, and also putting it on the website, it's gonna help, but then it's also gonna come up, let's say you're using YouTube, and putting them all up on YouTube, right? There, People are gonna find that on YouTube. People are gonna find that from the general search on YouTube. It's gonna rank really high. Uh, videos, they keep pushing videos higher and higher. So uh, creating video content is amazing, all right? Um, now, that was number uh, four and five, right? That's sorry, I spent a lot of time on that. Number six, run ads. So now you've done those kind of basic keyword research, right? But the number one way to really find out if keywords work and trigger or not are running pay-per-click and cost-per-click ads. Now, I traditionally would just really recommend using the Facebook, Instagram ads and the Google ads. Number one, I love Google ads more than anything. Uh, but both of them, their targeting works great, right? There's other stuff out there. You know, you have Bing ads, which still work great too. Bing, Bing's fine. Um, there's like Reddit ads, There's a, every platform's got ads, but really your bread and butter should be your Facebook ads, which is Instagram, Facebook, that's all one thing, and your 
Google ads. Uh, and also if you're doing video, YouTube ads aren't bad either. Um, but that's, that's a whole nother beast. But really, if you're starting to focus on what kind of ads should I be doing, you should be doing Google first and Facebook and Instagram if you're really using those either of those profiles. Um, those are those are so important. Uh, and you can because you're using the same keywords right to target things, so you're learning so much. And how are you tracking all this? You might be asking, and we'll talk about that in a second. That'll be number seven. Um, well, yeah, I guess that's, so. We just talked about number six, which was run ads. Number seven. Set up your analytics and tracking. You need to have Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and Facebook Pixel, which also works with Instagram stuff, running on your website to be tracking and looking at all that data coming from your social media and Googles to your website and back and where people are going. You can't have a great proper marketing funnel if you if you don't know where people are on the spree. If, if, you gotta know if they've seen you on Facebook and they're coming to your website, right? You wanna know that so you can know that this isn't like the first point of contact. This could be a second or a fifth time you've contacted this individual, right? So they've seen you online, right? Or on your email list, which is another thing. But you need to make sure you have all this data, right? So many people I take on these clients, like, oh yeah, I've been running uh, Facebook ads or this stuff, and I'm just not getting it perfect. So this one, and they don't, they never had the Facebook pixels run up, like getting that data from their website too, so that like even if people didn't find you first on Facebook, that Facebook can target them knowing they've been to your website. That's super important, right? So you got to think about stuff like that, and that's same. Google Analytics does the same thing. It helps you track people all around the web. Kind of creepy from an individual perspective, but let me tell you, every good website's doing to you. That's why people talk about cookies and stuff like that, and the tracking, blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, but that's that's it, it. It's good for marketing. That's what it is. Um, now that's number seven. Number eight, social media. Uh, we're getting down to kind of the more the bottom of the list, right? But social media is super important. Make sure you're posting um, to your Facebook. If you if you have Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, whatever you're using as your social media platform, and you should be using your Facebook page still. I understand it's decreasing in people using it, um, but you should be. Ha you can have the same kind of posts. I mean, it's a little different for each platform. It's gonna be a little niche, but make sure you're posting new content to it, and don't just be posting random stuff. But do actually make sure you're posting. No one wants to go to, if people go to your Facebook page and see you haven't posted in a year, they're like, is this guy still open? Is this firm still running? What's going on, right? So make sure you're posting on it. Uh, and then the, the more people, and if you're creating good content on your social media, you're gonna get followers, um, you know? So it, it's all, it, this is where you wanna be sharing that content, especially video content. If you have that great video content, you can be sharing on these social media platforms and I promise it'll be taking off. And then obviously we we're talking about ads right before number six, right? That is going to be where also on social media is so important to have an actual page for people to go back to with your Facebook ads, right? But um, yeah, that's number eight, just using your social media. Um, but then also if you're not using a platform, don't worry about it. Like if you don't want to use Twitter, just don't have a Twitter account then. I feel like so many people think it's important to have every single even snapchat or something it's like no there's no point for a law firm to really have snapchat unless you're like a national huge law firm no, no one's following your legal firm really on snapchat right um and then i guess linkedin is the one i was also going to talk about so linkedin is super important but more for lawyers i think for like a b2b kind of thing like you can get so many you can build your network really well on get referrals through linkedin linkedin is a great referral generating network so really make sure your linkedin profile is up to date also look professional if a client looks you up on linkedin you know see what you're doing make sure you have a good profile on linkedin it's your professional face right um i shouldn't have to tell people that but you didn't you run into it all right and then number nine help people out online what do i mean by that so there's a lot of like places out there so Let's go one sec. Uh, so there's stuff like Reddit, right? So Reddit has some like subreddits like Ask Lawyers uh, and then Legal Advice is the big one. Uh, and so you can give legal advice. Um, now this isn't just, you don't just post a link to your thing, but you give legal advice, you have a profile. On your profile you have the website and stuff like that. Um, but especially if it's in your state, answer some questions get there people do get traction from this and you can post links elsewhere that people will get stuff back from you from reddit um it's it's a little harder to get backlinks from but it's still a good idea uh and number one thing you can do is you can see these legal questions and then you can help create content from it for your website because if one person has this question unless it's real niche most likely a ton of people have these questions right 
So really uh, go on there, see what people are actually asking questions about, uh, mostly legal advice, uh, especially if it's in your niche. Sorry, that's an ad, Don't ignore that thing in the middle. But uh, beyond that, beyond Reddit, there's also Quora. You can, people ask all these legal questions on there, right? And you can actually link back to your blog post if you write, so you see it, let's say you see all this question, right? And you see there's not very many good answers. Write an amazing answer for it and uh, also have a link back to that same post because you'll, you'll rehash that as a blog post or something on your website. You can link to it. You can get a ton of like clickbacks from that. You can get a ton of traffic and eventually conversions from that. And it'll help you hire, rank higher on uh, SEO since people are visiting the site, right? So that's number nine. Really figure out these. Uh, there's Avo Q and A's too, and other all these legal websites have the Q and A parts too. Make sure you're interacting on those. That's just cherry on the top, though, right? Um, and yeah, and you just can create so much good content and get ideas based on all this content out there, and backlinks and stuff like that. Um, but this dude, look at this. He had he barely answered this question, and he's had four thousand views. You can do way better than that. You can have a little link. Um, a much more detailed this is uh, the first thing I clicked on here but you'll see some of them with way more than that all right but I'm gonna give you one more bonus thing so stick around for a sec uh, and if you need any of this info it'll be down below right uh, bonus review monitoring and reputation management right all these websites and platforms you're on like the Google my business Facebook uh, all the lawyer websites right for citations and stuff you need to have good ratings that's life or death right uh, the number one way to not get bad ratings is to get more good ratings, all right? You're going to always have that wacko client that's going to, you know, down, give you a one star or negative reviews and stuff like that. But when people like freak out when they get that. It's like because you didn't ask all your good clients that you've done great work for to give you five stars, you know? Get all, you just got to ask, really. Like if you've done good work, if you've saved someone's, helped with their divorce, you got them their license back, whatever kind of law you're doing, they're very much willing to just give you a quick five second review on Facebook or Google. Like you will get uh, good reviews. So really heavy CRM, you know, customer reputation management stuff or uh, consumer, whatever. Um, have a system in place that once you have finished a case and stuff, um, just ask for a good review from the clients that are um, that like you, obviously. Uh, that, that is so important. All right. Those are my nine uh, tips today. Thanks for seeing me. You can find all my info down below and notes from today and links and everything down there. One last thing I want you to do, uh, if you could give me a like and a subscribe, please, that would really help the channel. Um, this is what I do for a living. So if you have any more questions, feel free to email me, whatever. Let me know what's up. Uh, and if you have any questions, just put them down below, say a comment, say whatever you want. If you have any more questions about online marketing for attorneys or lawyers, just let me know. All right. My name's Kurt. Thank you so much for sticking around with me today. Uh, check out any more of these videos here. All right. It's all for you. Thanks for coming. Like, subscribe. Do -da 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 -da. Thank you.